And then while they went, the door was shut. They were disappointed. I pray you'll not be disappointed. This is the time to get ready. This is the time to get saved. This is the time to be righteous. This is the time to be pure, to be holy. This is the time to be sanctified. Don't delay till tomorrow because you don't know when the Lord will come. These Thessalonian believers were watching. And were waiting expectantly. Expecting that to happen any time and to wait for his son from heaven. Who will be raised from the dead. Even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. Even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. That wrath to come is talking about the indignation. It's talking about the judgment. It's talking about the fury. It's talking about the punishment. It's talking about the perdition which will come upon the ungodly, upon the guilty, those who have not repented. Christ has delivered all who believe in him from that wrath by taking our place and dying in our stead. And because we are told in John chapter 3, verse 36, he that believeth on the Son with repentance, with a dedication of his life to the Lord. Oh Lord, if you save me, I'll not continue that bad thing anymore. Those are the people that have everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth in him. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bore and endured the wrath of God against our sins when he died for us on the cross of Calvary. Through faith in him, we have the value of his, of his redemptive work. Reckon to our account. We are delivered from the wrath to come. He also delivers us from the coming period of judgment when the wrath of God will be poured upon the world during the great tribulation. The wrath to come is real. And all who desire to escape the dreaded suffering must flee from that wrath to come. Becoming true believers, abiding in Christ with those who, fled, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. I pray you will be among the number. And look at Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3, what it means to flee from that wrath to come. To be free from that indignation, that punishment, that perdition, that judgment coming upon the unbelievers. Luke chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 7. Luke chapter 3, verse 7. Here is what it says. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come. You must flee. It's not just that you stay there and say, Well, God, if you want to save me, God, if you want since Jesus died for me, I want to be saved. Do it at your own time. You flee. Just like the angels told Lord and the two daughters, and the wife, that they should flee to the mountain, run away out of that sin, separate from that sin, separate from that sinful life partner that they talk about, girlfriend, boyfriend, boy enemy, girl enemy, that's going to plunge you into eternal hell and eternal lake of fire, run away and flee, so that as you separate yourself from every form of sin, the mercy of God will come upon you in Jesus' name. And then when you flee, it's the evidence that you are fleeing, that you have gone away from that evil sin, immoral sin, licentious sin, and defiling sin. Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance. And begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able to these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruits is cut down, hewn down, and cast into the fire. And the people are saying, What shall we do then? And he answered and said unto them, He that has true cause, let him impart to him that has none. And he that has meat, let him do likewise. It says, let all the stinginess get away from you. And show that there's a change. There's a transformation by the action, by the, by the life that you live now. And then it says, and then came also the publicans to be baptized. And said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said, exact no more than that is appointed. Let the being born again, your salvation, your conversion, 
let it affect your action, your attitude, your interaction with people, your relationship with people. Verse 14, and the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, what shall, we, what shall we do? And he said unto them, do violence to no man. That is, you've been trained to be violent. You know, you have to repent of that, and you have to get away from that. If you're going to make it, and if you're going to flee from the wrath to come, do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. Let covetousness go, and then have the Lord, the Lord of glory, now reigning in your life. Romans chapter 1, we're looking at you from verse 18. Romans chapter 1, verse 18, flee from the wrath to come waiting for the coming of the Lord who has delivered us from the wrath to come. We're looking at Romans chapter 1 verse 18. In verse 18 for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. And those who still remain in ungodliness, unrighteousness of men, in the pollutions and the perversion of society, everybody is doing it. Everybody is giving bribe. Everybody is taking bribe. Everybody is doing evil. Everybody is cheating on the job. Everybody is cheating in exam. And because everybody is doing it, the unrighteousness and godliness of men, if you do it to them, the wrath to come will catch up with you. But if you're going to be ready for the coming of the Lord, and it can come any time, you repent, you turn away from sin, because it says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. There are some people that come here for Bible study. There are some people that come here for worship. And they have heard the truth over and over for many, many years. And they are holding that truth in unrighteousness. And you are wondering, the man is always coming to the Bible study and is still committing secret fornication and adultery with somebody else's wife. And he's coming to, and he will never miss Bible study. Holding the truth in unrighteousness. And the child that was born in the church, from primary school, I've been going to children's church. And secondary school, I've been going to the youth the fellowship. And yet when it explodes, when it comes, still taking part in that evil thing, holding the truth in our righteousness. Ask him, ask her, any doctrine of the Bible. They open the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, they know it. They know the truth. They're not born again. Holding the truth in our righteousness. And those people, when the Lord shall come, they'll be surprised, they'll be disappointed. I pray you'll not be among them. That those who are backsliding, they remain in that backsliding. But they keep on coming to church. And they'll never miss Bible study. They'll never miss the fellowship. And they have all this talk of outlines in their homes, in their, in their places. And they know the scriptures. They know it in their head. It's not in their heart. And they hold the truth in our righteousness. And when the rapture will take place, they'll be surprised. Those are the people ever learning and ever able to come to the knowledge of the truth. I pray you'll not be among them. Verse 28, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. To do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder. They commit abortion and they come to a church like this. And they, they're in the Bible study every time. Abortion. Husband and wife are green. We cannot have another child now. And they're killing, murdering innocent babies. Debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boosters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. They even encourage, they age and abet those people that do that same thing. 
I pray you will not be among that number. Let's come to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 9. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we're reading from verse 9. For God has not appointed us to wrath. If anybody perishes, that's not the will of God. That's of his own making. That's because of his own carelessness. That's because of not wanting to repent. That's because of hardening his heart. That's because of just shrugging his shoulder, I don't care. If anybody gets into that wrath which is to come, it's not because God is not merciful. It's because he heard and he said, I don't care, I don't worry. It doesn't, doesn't matter. I'll take whatever comes and then you'll take hell forever. For God has not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, verse 10, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Talk to one another. You see a backslider. Don't you say, bro, sister, you're calling them bro, and then you're encouraging them. You know they're backsliders. Mr. So-and-so, when are you coming back to the Lord? Miss So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so. Then it will shock them. Then they will know that you know that they're backsliders. You're not talking behind them. You are showing that you are really eager, passionate, that they should come back to the Lord. And then those who are believers who are facing persecution, pressure and pain, in their homes, in their places of work, you are talking to them, you are saying, endure, endure. You are encouraging one another, admonishing one another, so that nobody will be careless and nobody will perish. You are kind of moving one another on to remain steadfast in the Lord. Not just that you are talking about, have you got a land? Have you got another house? Are you built? How about your marriage? Invite me when you are going to do the marriage. Have you got a child now? How many children have you? Stop all that. The important thing, that people should be pure and holy and sanctified, ready and prepared for heaven. And then you are encouraging one another, saying, have you done your restitution? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Are you watching when the Lord shall come? It says you edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them that labor among you, and, over, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you. you. You encourage members of the church, members of your house fellowship, to respect our leaders, those who are laboring over us, preaching the word. And you don't, you don't want to allow all these uh, young people who are not born again coming in and wanting rebellion and disobedience to be the order of the day in the church, making other people that were standing to fall. You don't want to encourage that. You're telling them and admonishing one another to remember the people that labor over you and over you in the Lord and, admonish, and, to, and to esteem them very highly. Not just esteem them, you esteem them highly. Not just highly, very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. You're encouraging one another, you're speaking to one another, that there will be peace, there will be understanding, there will be unity, there will be kind of togetherness, oneness among the people of God. That's what you're doing if you're getting ready for the rapture. If you're going to escape the wrath to come. Now we exhort you, brethren, want them that are unruly. Want them. Don't clap for them. Want them. Don't encourage them. It's sinning. In evil, one them that are really comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, see that none render evil for evil, the spirit of retaliation that is capturing lives, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men, rejoice evermore, even when you are persecuted. When you're going through some deep waters, when the flame, the flood, the fire is there, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Don't murmur. Don't complain. Make your request known unto God. In everything, give thanks, like Paul and Silas sang in the Philippian jail. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This ought to be ready for the rapture. Quench not the spirit.